Hey you guys, welcome to my video today. And I hope that these tips can help you, my new RVers, my new newbie van lifers, my new nomads, yes! We're a part of the clan, we are a part of the clan, yes indeed. And it freedom is just feeling better and better every day. My hair is still not done, you guys, so please forgive me. <laughs> I'll still try to push it over, try to make it look cute, you know, a little something. <laughs> All right, so um, we'll jump right into it. Um, I made, made sure that I wrote my notes down just because I'm old school. It's easier that way. But I think you guys are going to enjoy this video, so let's jump into it right now. Tip number one. Tip number one, you all. Believe you can. That's the first tip. You have to believe that you can do this, okay? There's no ifs, ands, and buts about it. Life is already harder anyway. You know, the the past life, the whatever life you had before, it was already hard already. This is not like some new road that you're coming across. It might be literally new roads, but it's not something that you're not able to handle. And I am a Christian myself, so I'm going to say this, and I hope not to offend anybody who is not Christian or whatever the case may be, all due respect. Um, but I'm Christian myself, and I also study Buddhism, but I'm going to say this much, and I'm going to leave it at that. I won't exaggerate it too much. Um, God does things for a reason, and um, I honestly believe in my heart that God will not give you anything that you cannot handle, okay? So believe you can that's tip number one tip number two if you're able have a little bit of funds put away to the side like for battery emergencies and stuff like that even if it's like two hundred dollars um two hundred dollars trust me y'all it could go a long way a lot of us are getting into this lifestyle because we already broke <laughs> and so you know you know, you got to do what you got to do. So if you broke, you know, you might not have any extra money to be able to put aside. But whatever you're able to gather, even if it's through asking family and friends, because believe it or not, and it happened to me, um, there are family and friends that will be willing to help you. You just have to reach out and ask um, and be honest. It's all about being honesty. You know, and this is why I changed this to honesty RV as well, because we're just honest people and it's better to be honest and upfront. It doesn't matter, you know, if it sounds bad or not. It's about being upfront and then going from there. So just, you know, reaching out to family and friends and stuff. The worst that can happen is that they tell you no. Oh, well, I don't have it or, you know, I'm broke or I can't do it or whatever the case may be. And you got to be understanding to that because this is a pandemic. They didn't tell you to go buy an RV or whatever the case may be. And they didn't tell you to get a camper. They didn't tell you to get evicted from your home. You can't blame everybody else for our own mishaps. But you can ask other people for help and say, hey, you know, if you got a little something to spare, you know, and you work something out to where, you know, you pay them back or, you know, if it's family and they're willing to just help you because they're able to financially because it is hard for everybody. So don't feel any type of way. You can't feel that way. If somebody can't help you at that moment, they just can't help you. So um, we're responsible for our things, but it doesn't hurt to ask. All you can receive is a no. So tip number three, um, have a generator. Now, all of these tips are going to be like kind of wild in order. It's not, not a specific order, but it are they all are good tips. Um, have a generator, even a small one, because it can help in times of need. Like we have a generator that we bought for $399, literally like $399 at Menards. Um, and it's been a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful help because our generator on board at first was not working. Um, and so the mechanic had to do the lights and the generator and stuff like that. Um, the generator is still working. Like right now, the generator is working. Our generator is very quiet. We have a 7,000 watt generator um, that comes with our system, our 33 feet. And um, it's very quiet. But there's something going on to where, you know, it's, it's not either charging the battery or whatever the case may be. And then so, you know, like every few hours, I got to start up the car to make sure that it's running good, but that's good anyway, because you could be in the middle of nowhere and you want to keep your batteries charged. You don't want to let them die out on you, you know? So even if it's twice a day, it's meant to drive. So you want to make sure you just start it up at least once a day at that. But I would say twice a day, especially if you know you're having a battery issue. 
Um, so a generator come in good handy, especially if you got to work or you got kids that's doing online school, whatever the case may be, you want to be able to have some type of energy just in case. If you have a Jackery, if you have a Blue Eddy, if you have one of those, those are working good for you, good. This is just some little suggestions, you know. I can't remember what brand this one is, but it's not either one that I mentioned just now. So just try to have a little generator or something. It will help you. Um, tip number four. Um, limit your internet access now because the internet will go fast. Yes, it will. Okay. Right now we currently have T-Mobile. Um, and actually let me see here. I'm going to try to show you all it. So here, this T-Mobile, um, you guys might not be able to see that. Let's see. This T-Mobile, um, mini device here, it's a Franklin they call it a Franklin. But anyways, it's T-Mobile. I still got the plastic on it. Maybe that's why you can't see it. But anyways, yeah, so it's a T-Mobile device. Um, and uh, it's prepaid, and I can add gigabytes as I go. So for like $50, you get like 50 gigs. You might think, ah, oh, that's not a lot. But when you break it down, if you live still paying rent, remember we escaped the rent, y'all, so we can't complain about everything. You're going to have a little bit of bills. But... Um, if you do like, if you budget in your mind and you say, well, okay, kids, <laughs> we're going to do $150 for the month in internet. That's it. Um, right now in the beginning, being that I'm new at this too, as well, I just capped off and said, I said 200, we'll just say 200 for right now. And that's it as far as internet is concerned. So start to limit the use of your internet now and mentally. So then that way, um, you fulfill those times that you're not on the internet with other things. So I like to read. I'll read. And right now, for an example, I'm braiding my hair. So if I'm not doing a YouTube video, I'll be braiding some more of my hair. Try to finish that up before we get to Michigan. Um, but I'm taking my time with it. It's no rush. It's no big deal. You know, I'm not on anybody's schedule right now. And then when tax season comes around, of course, I'm on my own schedule because I run my own business. So um, if you're able to work remotely and run your own business and hustle too as well, hey, you got it made. Yo, and if you can't, that's okay. There's campground jobs. There's all of that stuff. Oh, it's so much remote work right now. Do not let this pandemic get to you. Don't let this pandemic make you feel like you can't do it. Mask up, because I wear my mask all the time. Mask up, okay, and keep your social distancing right now while everything clears water over the next few years. Because as far as I'm concerned, this is going to go on for a little while. Um, but depending on what your faith is, like I said... My vaccine is the good Lord above. So um, I just keep my mask on. Our children keep our mask on. And we keep very much distance from people because we don't have any friends and we don't have any get togethers, anything of that sort. Um, all right. So moving on. Tip number five. Stock up on any additional water, even if your tanks are filled. So we have an 80 gallon fresh water tank. And we still haven't filled it up yet. I've been going through gallons of water and very slowly because I already was watching RV videos before and being conscious of the fact that we don't have our water tanks filled up yet. And so I got to wash dishes with that water. If you got to do a bird bath, you got to do that with that water. You got to use it for drinking. You got to use it for boiling. I'll boil my water and then I'll put a little soap in it and then I'll use that in order to scour out the pan or whatever the case may be. Gives it a little hot water and stuff like that even if. So tip number six, learn your rig. Do a full walk around, okay? Do not be intimidated to check every nick and cranny. It will help even if you don't know at the moment what to do. Even if you don't know, just look around. Open up every compartment, look at everything, try to plug it in, see, you know, just don't do anything dangerous per se. If you're really just unsure, especially if it's something like your propane outlet or something, you're very unsure, just leave it alone and get somebody that knows what they're doing. So you're not intimidated by that per se. But if you're in the middle of nowhere or you really don't have anybody to contact and you don't have money to pay a mechanic or anything, take your time. If you have your phone, look up a YouTube video, look up the make and model of your rig. And do some research before, you know, take any, you know, just take cautious measures. Um, but it's definitely important to learn your rig. You want to know where your fresh potable water goes into. Um, oh, <laughs> the baby woke up. She was taking a nap. 
But um, you really want to know where your potable water goes. You want to know where your propane outlet is. You want to know your connections. This is what I'm saying. Just know your connections. Tip number seven. Do not rush. You started this lifestyle to de-stress, not stress yourself out. Do not rush everything. Everything is going to be okay. Everything is going to be okay. It's not going to be perfect. You heard I said okay. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be good. It's not going to be the worst. It's not going to be this. It's going to be okay. You're going to have your ups. You're going to have your downs. But it doesn't mean you just give in. You turn in the towel or you rush through things because you're frustrated. Do not rush. You have nothing to do, quote unquote. Now, if you got into this lifestyle, you obviously thought ahead of time. You said, mm, how am I going to make money? I'm going to work. Same deal. Even if you were working from the computer at home, you have nothing to do, quote unquote. Okay. You have nowhere to be, quote unquote. Take your time. And even if you're working from home on somebody's schedule, even though you, quote unquote, have something to do, right? We, we know what I'm trying to say. You got something to do. But you also can take your time because rushing is not going to help you. God forbid something happens to you. That's the end of it. So you ain't got no time to be rushing to have no mistakes or any accidents or have to be running to nobody's emergency room. And me personally, I haven't had those issues. Knock on wood. I haven't had those issues because I stay away from certain things. And when I have my nicks and crannies and stuff, remember, you know, I did nursing for years. So I know the basics of taking care of myself and my children and my husband. So, you know, just take your time. Take your time. Do not rush. A lot of people rush. You got out here to be stress free. That means relax yourself. Think first. Do not overreact. Do not rush. Do not rush. All right. Tip number eight. I had to count it for me. <laughs> Tip number eight. Um, I'm reading my notes here. Yeah, always start up your car. Prepare your battery. Give it a little gas, like I was saying before. You know, just give it a little crank. You know, if you're going to be sitting somewhere, even if you're there for 14 days, let's say on the BLM land, and you're there for 14 days straight, you definitely want to make sure you're cranking up your vehicle in the morning, in the afternoon, and at nighttime, especially if you know your batteries can act a little shady. Of course, you want to have some jumper cables or a jumper battery. Yes, a need. I'm going to make another video on just tools that you need or things that you should have, especially when you're a newbie and you don't know what you're doing, you ain't got no idea, nothing, what apps you should have downloaded and what information resources, you know, what places you should be looking up and what resources to use. I'm going to do that on another video. Um, now, tip number nine. Secure all locks on the doors. Add alarms if necessary. Secure all locks and things, okay? Especially if you're about to drive off too, you want to make sure to make all your cabinets at the bottom lock. Make every sure everything is secure. Um, I've done this drill a couple of times already. The first time, it didn't go too well. That's when I have my other video where AAA had to come out and all of this stuff. Didn't go too well, okay? So we packed up everything and ultimately I couldn't even drive out. Then we did it again and it was a success and we were able to put gas and that's when I talked about how I put gas um, and it was $100 um, and it gave us a half a tank at $3.15. I mentioned that in my other video. Um, so you want to secure your locks. You want to make sure that none of your things are open. People will try to jack you. People try to steal from you. People could go into your cab when you leave it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to be careful. Lock your things up. Lock it up, okay? A $3 alarm is what saved our life to a certain extent. I don't think it would have been that much danger. I would have pushed this butt out or something. Hopefully, it didn't have nothing else on them. But otherwise than that, it still saves your life. $3 alarm from Family Dollar. $3. And you put it on. I have a video on it so you guys can look at it. The one where I'm like almost got jacked. So you need to look at that because I have the video of the alarm that you can get for $3, man. And a lot of you guys probably already know what I'm talking about. It's very cheap, inexpensive. Just get one. At least it'll give you an alarm, something. And you'll know somebody trying to play around with your doors or something. Because this is what woke us up the other day was the alarm. And then we saw the dude bunk out on his bike. So just be careful. Put an alarm. Secure everything. Every lock, everything that you got below. Don't be too trustworthy, especially if you're not in an area where you know it's just you by yourself boondocking or something. If you're by yourself, you might be able to leave it open. You might get a bear or a moose that might try to come in. But 
a bear or moose or a cat or a dog. I don't know. You might have something try to come in, but it's it probably won't be somebody with like a gun or something trying to jack the little bit that you got in the middle of the country somewhere. Um, tip number 10. And this is going to be a little bit off because I have 11 tips plus like one that has no tip that has no number to it. Anyways, so tip number 10. Remember, you're in an RV. You're in an RV. Okay, RV, van, whatever, your own wheels. If you don't feel safe where you're at, move to another location. Just move. Turn your baby on and bunk out. Okay, this is the beauty to nomad life. This is the beauty to being a nomad. Just go, go. You're tired of the BS, go. You're tired of the neighbors next door, go. You're tired of seeing that same store, go. Just go. Don't waste no time. You got one life to live. Live it to the fullest ability, the fullest ability. Stay more joyful than miserable. Because there's no such thing as good people and bad people in the world. Remember, I always tell you guys, it's only joyful people and miserable people. And I choose to be joyful. At least 95% of the time, the other 5% I'm miserable. <laughs> but um, yeah, just, you know, make sure that you move if you don't feel comfortable. Okay. Tip number 11. Always, at all times, keep at least a half a tank of gas. Always, please, please, folks, especially newbies. And you don't know what you're doing just like me, too. And you just know the basics or whatever or you think you know. Please, even if it's one little tip of mine that you could take, keep that one in thought. Keep some gas. You can't get nowhere if you ain't got no gas. That's the most important thing. Gas and batteries, you better make sure that sucker start up. Or if not, you screwed. You screwed elite unless you got AAA. Oh, that's another thing, too. I'm going to add this in random. Tip number 12, get AAA. Get AAA, okay? They're a lifesaver. Lifesaver. And then you can get the RV coverage for like 100 and something. What is I think I pay like, what did I pay? Like 120 for the whole year or something? 120 or between 120 and 180, you get the RV coverage cool yo they already came out two times to jump my battery and they came out like a few days after that already had the coverage like a, a day after like i didn't even barely have the coverage so it's not like you have like a grace period or something you need to get triple a membership even if you ain't got nothing else i don't know if y'all got insurance or whatever the case may be i don't know i don't know that's not my business all i'm saying is that get something okay get something um get that triple a um, and this one has no number because we already talked about it and it was number one. You can believe in yourself. Your other life, you were living just as hard as well. Remember that nothing is easy peasy. So don't think that this one is going to be easier than the next. It's just that this is a different type of chapter. This chapter might be more smoother for you. Because that's what you're trying to move in towards that direction of smoothality. <laughs> smoothality. I just made it up. But you're moving in a nice direction. So you want to, you know, you want to know that you can. Because things are going to hit you and it's going to make you feel like utter, utter crap. And you got to be prepared to say, you know what? I can, I could do this. Can't nobody stop me. Only the good man above. When he tells me that my heart is done and my body can't do it no more, then I'm done. Otherwise than that, if the man above is not telling me it's done, it ain't over. You heard me? I ain't say like, oh, it ain't over till the fat woman say no. It ain't over until God say it's over. It ain't over till the Lord say it's over. It ain't over until Jesus Christ say it over. It ain't over until I say it's over with him. Because once you give in, that's when he's ready for you to go. He know you ain't got no more work to do. You gave up. That's just my belief. Not saying that that's true for everybody else. All due respect. Just my belief. When I talk to myself, that's my belief. So that's how I keep myself going, me personally. God helps he who helps themselves. And I am going to help myself. All he's doing is giving me a little tool. Just a little oomph, a little push, a little, here you go. Here's a little tool just to help you out here. But I gave you everything you have. Brains down to feet, down to hands, everything you need to do. And even if you didn't have hands and arms and anything like that, as long as you got a beaten heart and you got a brain, you can think and do what you got to do. For yourself or for you and your family or whomever you may be responsible for. 
So, those were my hearty tips for the day. And I hope you all appreciated this video very well because I appreciated sharing the information with you all because I feel it's going to help somebody, somebody that might be scared. You thinking, oh my God, I don't know if I should do this or I've been hearing videos. I've been watching van life things and I just don't know if I should do it or not. Do I have enough money to do it? Yes, you do. I saved the money for the RV, me and my husband in one month and we were like bunk out. You'd be surprised what you could do when you decide to not pay your slum landlord. When they want to have you without a refrigerator and without a stove. Once you get to your boiling point, you'd be surprised what you're capable of doing. Putting together money and buying an RV, Class C, Class A, Class B, a van, a car. Whatever you got to do in order to succeed. And have somewhere to lay down. And be with nature, do it. Because working somebody's nine to five is not nature. All that's doing is bringing you stress. If you don't go to that nine to five, they're going to fire you. And if they fire you, you don't get a check. And if you don't have a check, you can't pay the landlord. And when you can't pay the landlord or you can't pay your mortgage or you can't pay your taxes on your home, you're done. Now, at least if you have a home or a mortgage, that's a little bit, maybe a little bit better. I would say without the mortgage, but if you have like taxes, some places you can have acres of land for a hundred and something dollars in taxes and you ain't really paying that much per year. It's still better off than paying somebody's rent or like a $300,000 mortgage for a place that you barely are in and you work all day. And then you're like, I live the good life, but you work all day. You're barely there. And then the folks who work at home too, I've experienced the same thing for many, many years. Working for myself, working for other companies remotely. And you're still tied to these people at their time. Tired of it. It's so unliberating. Once you get on the road, you'll realize how much money you really need and you don't need a lot in order to survive. You don't need a lot. Maybe you might need your gas money, little amenities if you need, you know, a little internet or whatever. There's places to fill your water for free, dump stuff for free. You can even jump to pantries that I'm sure that they'll give you food, certain churches and places like that. And you don't have to necessarily live in that area. Sometimes they're just giving away things. Stock up on your canned stuff. Stock up on beans and rice and stuff. Things that are going to carry you over, especially when we go through this damn food shortage soon. It's coming, y'all. We're going to end up in a food shortage. And guess what? Us nomads are going to be prepared. We're going to have dry stock, flour, tortilla mix all the spanish people <laughs> and then even if you're not spanish if you're american whatever beans and rice will serve you well it's things that could be stored for many years canned foods that can last you get prepared folks get prepared you do not want to be so stationary when shortages start to come up and then on top of that we got global warming going on different places flooding and stuff you definitely don't want to be in somebody's sticks and bricks when all of a sudden they tell you got to leave like the folks in florida had to do and abandon all their stuff. At least if you got an RV or you got a vehicle, you could just bunk out and just leave. Leave. Y'all need to think about that. Stop hesitating. Stop thinking that it's going to be hard on the road. It's already hard what you're living through. That's why you're watching this video now. And if you're already an RV and you got your things and you're just getting experience, you're watching this now because one of these tips might be able to do you some good. I hope it does because that's all I need from it. That's all I need from the benefit of this video is for my watchers to be able to grab something from it, not just to be watching me because they bored, you know, just, you know, or like, let me watch this chick real quick. She was, she got to say, nah, grab something from it. You gonna need some of this information. Just grab it, grab it, you know, grab a little bit of it. I take tips and everything from everybody else too, because you could just use it, you know, use those little tips, put it into conjunction with your own thoughts. And then you come up with a game plan. We can learn from each other. So I'm going to let you all go. Thank you all so much for tuning in today for this informational video. And if you feel that there's something I'm missing that I can tell my viewers, please comment below. And, and that will help other people as well. Negative comments, of course, I will erase. But if you have any positive comments that can help other watchers and other new RV folks, van life people, listen, this is wonderful. And definitely visit Home Alliance Um. Um, home on wheels alliance.org bob wells and his uh folks sue ann and phyllis and all of them and val they all run that they're, they're great folks man the caravan is coming up october 6th october 20th my goal is to meet my bob wells i'm a fan hopefully if god blesses me we'll get to nevada in time to get to the caravan and it's going to be wonderful it's going to be exciting to meet with the community of nomads keep your social distancing put your mask on and everything will be all right just have your faith and know that there's someone upstairs that's much stronger 
You all have a good day now. Stay blessed. And I'm out of here. I'm Guru Paviel. Make sure you hashtag me um, on Facebook. Hashtag me on Instagram. Um, we're now Honesty RV on here. We're still using Viva, my RV, La Familia. But I had to change it a little bit because it was hard for folks to really find us. So Honesty RV is us. Um, if you have to do any emailing or you want to email me personally, I will answer every email. So please feel, feel free to do so. Awaken and live again at gmail.com. Talk to you all soon and see you all down the road and safe travels.